there are different ways that you can record your credit card transactions in QuickBooks. Several people, what they do is they come in here and they go to banking, write checks, and they write a check to their you know, credit card company for $4,258, let's just say. And it's for some fuel and some maintenance and some dues, let's just say. Okay. So that's a great way to do it when you're running on a cash basis. But there's two things if you do pay your credit card this way that you're missing out on. That's a big deal. First things first, if you are... Uh, trying to keep your books on an accrual basis, which we strongly recommend our clients do. Even if you file your taxes cash basis, try and keep your books on as close to an accrual basis as possible. And the reason for that is you want to see the ebbs and flows of your business. You want to see if you spent $2,000 in fuel last month and $2,000 in fuel this month, that makes sense. But if you spent $4,000 $4,000 in one month on fuel and zero the next month, that might be some trigger of something to take a look at. You know, hey, why did I all of a sudden spend so much money in fuel in one month? Something to take a closer look at, okay? It's a way to kind of protect the integrity of your books. All right, so by posting a credit card this way, we're actually posting for the last months of purchases on our credit card, right? So everything we purchased on a credit card for the last month. And what that doesn't allow us to do is segregate out what happened in November versus what happened in December. Okay, so that's one big way that I don't recommend doing your credit card entries this way. The second reason I don't recommend entering your credit card purchases this way is because let's say that this maintenance and repairs was actually paid to a 1099 vendor. This transaction will not be picked up when you run 1099 reports at the end of the year. Because the vendor's name's nowhere on here, right? So to ensure that any of these get picked up on 1099 reports as well, you need to make sure to use credit card charges, okay? So I'm going to clear out of this first, all right? Again, it's possible to use this, but I don't recommend it. This is how you should be entering credit cards. All right, so you go up to your list in your chart of accounts. You're going to come down here and make a new account. And it's going to be a credit card account. Say continue. And we're just going to call it MasterCard. Oops. Okay. And say save and close. Okay. You can put any of the information that you want in here. uh, But for the most part, I'm just going to say save and close for now. It's going to ask me if I want to set up online services. It's just similar to your bank accounts. You can set up online services. I actually find that If you use your credit cards for a lot of transactions, like going to the gas station uh, or, you know, having meal expenses or office supplies expenses, if you have a credit card that's used around the office frequently, setting up online services for that is really the best because it can pick up every time it goes to Office Depot that it's an office supplies expense. Or every time you go to, you know, a gas station, Chevron, every time it sees Chevron, it automatically goes to fuel expense. So it's it's a great thing to set up online services for these. But for now, I'm going to say no. Okay, so once I have a credit card set up in here, I can go up to banking and enter credit card charges, okay? So the screen here looks similar to entering a bill, and it truthfully is pretty much the same thing, except for instead of hitting accounts payable, it's going to hit your credit card account. So we can say here, let's say the... um, We bought the fuel from Connor Garden Supplies... All right, and so the amount was $2,000, but remember how we said it was $4,000 total on that last bill because $2,000 was on November 24th. And then we had another charge for $2,000 on 12-15. Okay, so now when I run my profit and loss, I'll have $2,000 in November and $2,000 in December, and maybe that's just a monthly fuel fee that we pay anyway, all right? Now let's talk about the 1099 expense, all right? We had some work done, some repairs and maintenance done. So now when we put $200 in here and we put it to repairs and maintenance, what did, what did we put it to? It was, let's just say building repairs. 
Okay, now when I run my 1099 report, it'll show up that we pay $200 to Mendoza. Now, of course, $200 falls under the threshold for compensation for you know non-employees, but at least it'll still pick up that $200 that we did on 1215 because you might have had $200 a month, right? And then they would have had enough to require you to file a 1099 for them. Okay, so allow doing it through the credit card register here allows us to record the expense to the proper vendor and to the proper expense and still have it as a payable on account. So when I say save and close here, okay, now if I look at my MasterCard account, I have there the $2,000, the $2,000, and the $200, okay? And then what happens is I'm going to go ahead and get my bill at the end of the month from my credit card company and these totals should add up to the totals on my credit card receipt or my credit card statement. Now if they don't then of course I can enter additional transactions in here as well but at least it helps you to keep track of your credit card transactions.